This is a video of a microsurgical three-level anterior cervical discectomy infusion from C4 to C7. This patient is a 34-year-old African-American man with severe bilateral radiculopathy in C6 and C7 distribution and bilateral upper and lower extremity hyperreflexia with numbness and tingling in arms and legs for three years. His MRI showed multiple level cervical spinal spondylosis with the most pronounced levels at C4, 5, 5, 6, and 6, 7 with severe bilateral neural foraminal narrowing at all levels. Based on his MRI of the cervical spine as well as clinical symptoms on the neurological exam, we discussed options of treatment with the patient. He's already failed physical therapy for three months as well as two epidural nerve blocks. He wished to proceed with surgery. Flexion and extension x-rays show significant anterior osteophytes at C5-6 and 6 7 as well as posterior osteophytes at 4-5 and 5-6 without spinal alignment disturbance. Patient's operative position was supine. We placed a chin strap with traction of 7 pounds of weight. We identified the midline and then medial border of the left-sided sternocleidomastoid muscle. Skin incision was approximately 2 inches long. He was sterilely prepped and draped. After skin incision, we incised the platysma muscle. We identified the left-sided amohyoid muscle and dissected it. Stitches were placed proximally and distally. Then we incised the muscle and divided it with bogey cautery. The edges of the muscle were retracted, superiorly and inferiorly, serving as a form of retraction. We continued dissection between the neck organs medially and neurovascular bundled laterally. The carotid artery and jugular vein are clearly visible on the left side. This is the anatomical view. After reaching the anterior surface of the cervical spine, deep cervical fascia was opened and left and right anterior longus coli muscles were identified. Bovey cautery at the power of 15 was used to incise at the medial aspect of the left and right anterior longus coli muscles. A bent needle was used to identify the highest level planned for surgery at C4-5, demonstrated on the intraoperative lateral C-spine x-ray. Following this, the lateral-lateral retractor was placed in position at C5-6 at the center of the exposure and then the curlex was placed on the right retractor blade. An additional two pounds of weight was placed on it to prevent the right-sided retractor from sliding. Superior and inferior exposure were obtained with a pair of retractors. Final aspect of exposure is seen with the surgical field prepared for a three-level anterior microsurgical discectomy with the anterior aspect of the vertebral bodies from C4 to C7 with adjacent intervertebral spaces. We started the anterior cervical discectomy at the level of C6-7. We then used the Midas Rex drill with the M8 tip and shaved off cartilaginous end plates from the upper and lower surface of the vertebral bodies. Once the bone bleeding at the junction of the cartilaginous end plates and the vertebral body was encountered, we stopped the drilling. We then used 1 mm and 2 mm kerosene rongeurs to take down the posterior longitudinal ligament and any adjacent disc osteophytes on both sides. We decompressed both nerve roots to the right and the left. Gel foam powder was used for hemostasis continuously. We simultaneously prepared and flattened the anterior surface of the vertebral bodies to be able to appropriately accommodate the plate. The next level was at C5 and C6. Again, we used the Midas Rex drill with an M8 tip to shave off the inferior lip of the C5 vertebral body. We then used the number 15 blade to incise the anterior longitudinal ligament and emptied the disc material with pituitary rongeurs. We exposed the medical aspect of the uncinate processes and then again using the Midas Rex drill with the M8 tip to shave off cartilaginous end plates of C5 and C6 vertebral bodies and thin down the disc osteophytes inferiorly. We went drilling all the way to medial aspects of both uncinated processes inferiorly. We used 1 and 2 millimeter kerosene rongeurs to decompress the dura, including bilateral nerve roots at C5 and C6. 
We confirmed the decompression with blunt micro nerve hooks. We made sure to undercut superiorly and inferiorly the intervertebral disc space and osteophytes, providing adequate decompression. The same was repeated at the C4 and the C5 levels. We drilled out the inferior lip of the superior vertebral body and then we resected the soft material with pituitary rongeurs. We again identified the medial aspect of the uncinated process both on the right and on the left side. Again, the drilling of the cartilaginous end plates was done and then kerosene rongeurs, 1 mm and 2 mm, completed the resection of posterior longitudinal ligament and the disc osteophytes. Again at this level, good decompression was achieved removing the soft disc material and the disc osteophytes. Note the rectangular shape of intervertebral disc space is prepared for allografts and the flattened anterior surfaces of the vertebral bodies. This is a final view after microsurgical discectomy at the C4 to C7 levels. We then started using graft size trials starting from C6 to C7. Appropriate size of cortical allografts filled up with bone putty were placed in position achieving intervertebral body fusion at C6 to C7 and they were tapped down just a millimeter below the anterior surface of the anterior cervical spine. We continued using gel foam powder for hemostasis. The same was repeated at the C5 to C6 level. A trial was used to determine the size of the allograft and again allograft was placed in position achieving intervertebral body fusion at C5 to C6 level. Finally the same was done at the C4 to C5 level and this is a final view of intervertebral body fusion at C4 to C7. At this point, weights from cervical traction were taken off. The grafts were tightly fitting and placed in position at each level. We then place the plate in position, making sure that the plate is fitting well and stable along the anterior surface of the cervical spine from C4 to C7. The plate was positioned a few millimeters below the superior end plate of C4 as well as above inferior end plate of C7. To make sure that the plate is in the midline, we watch the distance between uncinated processes and plate at all three levels. The plate was secured to the vertebral body of C6 with pins. The drill was used to create pathway for screws and variable titanium screws were placed in position first at C4. Appropriate size of screws was chosen measuring it relatively to the size of the drill which is 13 millimeters. This can be visualized on the lateral x-ray. We placed the C4 screws in position. We placed the screws into the vertebral body of C7 and then took out the safety pins. We repeated this process at the C5 and C6 and confirmed with lateral x-ray. Once the screws were nice and tight and in position, they were locked. Irrigation with copious amounts of antibiotic saline was done. Any bleeding was easily controlled by bipolar coagulation and gel foam powder. We then inspected the jugular vein and the internal carotid artery on the left side as well as medial wall of the esophagus. We then placed the drain in position, externalizing a separate outlet and securing with a 2-0 silk stitch. The omohyoid muscle was returned in position, suturing it together and then the wound was closed with subcutaneous 2-0 vicral and 3-0 vicral intermittent stitches. Steri strips, telfa, and tegaderm were used for dressing. Final AP and lateral x-rays confirmed good position of the plate screws and allografts. Patient was discharged home on the first post-operative day and he returned for a wound check and x-ray two weeks after surgery. He was kept in the soft collar for two weeks and then the collar was weaned off the following week. His numbness and tingling resolved immediately after surgery and his hyperreflexia resolved as well.